one. Mock, it's been more than a month since I did a seven-round Dallas Cowboys mock draft, so I'm getting back to it this week and each successive Sunday until we get to the draft. For this mock I used a new simulator at thedraftnetwork.com, the mock draft machine. The board has two settings, predictive board and player rankings. I did one using both because I wanted to see what the difference would be, and it turned out to be pretty significant. My philosophy was best available player within reason and to try not to load up at a given position. Given how the Cowboys have worked during free agency, this could truly be a best available player draft. But we'll see. The system made selections for all teams except the Cowboys. Round 2, no. 58 overall. Predictive board, DL Dexter Lawrence, Clemson player rankings, WR Riley Ridley, Georgia I like both selections here, but given where the Cowboys stand at wide receiver I'd be more inclined to take Lawrence here. It's interesting to note that Lawrence was near the top of both boards. Ridley was nowhere to be found on the predictive board. Round 3, no. 90 overall. Predictive board, CB Isaiah Johnson, Houston player rankings, RV Miles Sanders, Penn State The Cowboys have had two meetings with Johnson, so a selection isn't outside the realm of possibility. Sanders would be good depth for Ezekiel Elliott. Round 4, no. 128 overall. Predictive board, WR Darius Slayton, Auburn player rankings, OT Bobby Evans, Oklahoma Slayton is a nice value in the fourth round. Evans is probably only a tackle in the NFL, but the Cowboys could use some depth to grow there. I'd prefer Slayton. Round 4, no. 136 overall. Predictive board, S. Hugo Chukwuamati, Oregon player rankings, S. Mike Bell, Fresno State a pair of safeties came up here for the Cowboys. I'd lean toward Amati, but I think the Cowboys could do better in both cases. Round 5, no. 165 overall. Predictive board, RB Miles Gaskin, Washington player rankings, DL Demarcus Christmas, Florida State Gaskin is an underappreciated back in this draft. If I could snag him in round 5 as a Zeke backup I'd do it, as I'd hear. Round 7, no. 241 overall. Predictive board, WR Lil Jordan Humphrey, Texas player rankings, LB Kendall Joseph Clemson neither of these guys are throwaway picks here. These are solid 7th rounders that could develop. I preferred the predictive board draft here. The Cowboys address all their needs and found a player with a championship pedigree to plug into their defensive line. It's going to be hard to find an edge rusher in the second round that can have an immediate impact based on both mocks. So I'll take a tackle inside in this case. What do you think? You can chime on this mock draft and much more, because we have a Cowboys Roundtable feature in our discussion area and you can access it here at 247sports.com. It's a great reason to become a member. At 247 Sports NFL Mock Draft now added to. Join in. HTTPS colon slash slash t dot co slash g o n bamico 3 pick dot twitter dot com slash 48 kv 5 co Mike Fisher at Fish Sports March 28th 2019 2. Previous scouting Cowboys pieces here are my previous scouting pieces on Texas defensive lineman Charles Omenihu. My next. This time it's. I explain in my most recent first and 10 piece at a 247 sports at fish sports at Allen Bell 247. To me he's one of the best OLs in the CS at fish sports. Cowboys make the deal for Quinn Robert Quinn is coming to Dallas for a 6th round pick in 2020 and a lowering of his cap hit via base salary to 8 million dollars. Yeah, so the Cowboys won that trade. I still don't understand why the Dolphins were in such a hurry to get rid of the guy, aside from trying to dump the money. I mean this statistic, on its own, is interesting enough. 28-year-old Robert Quinn finished no. 
when among edge rushers in ESPN's pass rush win rate and had a higher PFF pass rush grade than guys like Melvin Ingram, Daniil Hunter, and Joey Bosa. Weird that he didn't have more of a trade market, lots of teams could use edge help. https colon slash slash t dot co slash ccu jexto u ben baldwin at ben baldwin march 29 2019 and when you look at quinn's game by game numbers last season he finished with four sacks in december plus his body of work is hard to argue with robert quinn 69 career sacks in eight seasons former all pro the at dallas cowboys just added a dominant pass rusher to that defense Pick that twitter.com slash ord1vbhg8m, NFL, at NFL, March 29, 2019 to me, making this deal was a no-brainer for Dallas. They get a quality edge rusher to man the right side and Demarcus Lawrence Mons the left side. Easy peasy. Stephen Jones is quite happy right now. Felt like he could really flourish at the right end spot in our scheme. Hear from Stephen Jones as he assesses the trade for Robert Quinn and how he's motivated to sign Demarcus Lawrence to a long-term deal. Pick that twitter.com slash eskia, Dallas Cowboys at Dallas Cowboys, March 28, 2019. Now Quinn joins a defensive starting lineup that is starting to shape up into something that can at least match last year's defensive production. Dallas to Robert Quint Antoine Woods DT Malik Collins to Demarcus Lawrence Asterisk LB Layton Van Der Eschel Jalen Smith Ivy Sean LEECB Byron Jonas Xavier Woods George LeCap Pichito Awuzi Mike Leslie at Mika Leslie Ufa March 28, 2019 and we haven't even gotten to the NFL draft yet. This is how you're supposed to do free agency, people. The Cowboys fan I ran into at the bank on Saturday was hella excited about this. 4 MEANWHILE, Indy Law World. R. Mike Fisher made the point that the Cowboys want you to know that Robert Quinn should not be considered a Demarcus Lawrence replacement. Lawrence is under contract with the franchise tag. The Cowboys would have to make a move to get rid of him, and they're not inclined to do that. In fact, as Stephen Jones noted above, the Cowboys are optimistic about a long-term deal, but, then again, they always are. But the waiting game on Lawrence is starting to spill out of the privacy of negotiation. Consider the thread of tweets below as a reminder of how these things can get a little out of control. The https colon slash slash t dot co slash seven sneak five e two n j football at j passports one march 27 2019 six years 120 million dollars sounds like a lot right you can divide that's 20 million dollars per year not all guaranteed of course but wasn't that at one time what we thought lawrence and his team were looking for if Tank was willing to do $20 million a PY before, that explains why. But his agent then jacks up request to $23 million? That's not good faith negotiating. Mike Fisher, at Fish Sports, March 27, 2019 So the price is going up? I mean I expected Lawrence Go get at least $20 million per year, maybe a little more. The devil is always in the guaranteed money but cap space isn't an issue for the Cowboys. So just pay him, right? Well not if the target keeps moving. Fish talked earlier this week about repairing relationships as it pertains to negotiations. But it might not be about repairing a relationship with Lawrence at this point. One key step to fixing contract negotiations on Tank Lawrence, fixing the relationship between the it's somewhere between broken and non-existent. There's no trust. Mike Fisher, at Fish Sports, March 27, 2019 As Bobby Belt pointed out, Cantor has represented several current and former Cowboys. He notes them below. Current Cowboys repped by David Cantor, Demarcus Lawrence, Daniel Ross, Tristan DeCout Former Cowboys who are or have been repped by Cantor, Jack Crawford, Andrew Gatchker, Joey Ivey, Benson Mayowa, Deontay Thompson, etc. Bobby Belt, at Bobby Belt TX March 27, 2019 Now this is me talking, not Bobby. Look at those players related to Lawrence. 
Cantor sees a payday for his client and his commission. This could be part of the problem. Oh, and by the way, it seems, Tank still has no intention of having the surgery on his torn labrum until he has a long-term deal. Reading between the lines, I basically take this to mean, if you put off that shoulder surgery too long, you're only hurting your own bottom line, I have no idea where this is going. https colon slash slash t dot co slash cj6 kjbtjfw david hellman at hellman c march 25th 2019 this is gonna take a while longer 5 mean while in philadelphia eagles fans are insanely focused on a familiar star being used as a graphic on the phillies jumbotron during games and the season just started Dear, at Feliz Way love you with all of our hearts. However, the use of the Cowboys star as a transition for our beloved baseball team's Jumbotron is absolutely sickening and unacceptable. Please address this issue immediately, thank you, philadelphiapick.twitter.com slash bnfpmgddht, Eagles Nation, at Fleagles Nation, March 29, 2019 Just so we're caught up, the Phillies have a great script logo that spells out, Phillies, and the graphic that dots the eyes are, indeed, blue stars. According to sportslogos.net, the Phillies have been using the script logo since at least 1944. That logo featured two red stars. The Phillies started using the script logo with the blue star since 1992. So the Phillies have been trolling Eagles fans for more than 25 years. If so, best troll job ever. 6. Byron Jones Surgery and Chatter This is not the kind of news you want to hear when it comes to a player who just got the fifth-year tender and is expected to be a part of your starting lineup on defense in 2019. Byron Jones reportedly underwent surgery for hip ailment that appeared in 2018 season. Expectation for return is. Assuming the recovery goes well, Jones should be ready for training camp. So then why on earth is there trade discussion about Jones, and for that matter another Cowboys corner, Jordan Lewis? Well our Mike Fisher got to the bottom of that, and turns out it's a lot of smoke and no fire. Keeping up with the drafts here's the perfect place to go you if you need a comprehensive list of Cowboys visits, meetings and scouting sessions with players eligible for the 2019 draft. Our Patrick Walker updates it on a regular basis. The most comprehensive list of is here, bookmark this https colon slash slash t dot co slash fury 31 jx4 and pick dot twitter dot com slash 4 hmb 3 px upu podrick no c walker at voice of the star march 28 2019 more on witten trying to figure out exactly how much jason witten might play this season our mike fisher spent some time pondering that this week and the answer is as complex and as easy as you might imagine Witten 2019 snap count? Complex question with a simple. Best Coast Boys podcast In the latest episode of the Best Coast Boys podcast, hosts Landon McCool and John Oning dive into the latest Dallas Cowboys news, including the trade for Miami Dolphins to Robert Quinn. After the pleasantries, Landon and John dive into the latest news surrounding the Cowboys. The guys start by discussing the Byron Jones hip surgery. The guys discuss how the issue may have hampered Jones down the stretch of last season. On top of that, the guys goes through a potential recovery timeline for Jones. After that, the guys discuss the ramifications of the new pass interference replay rules that were passed at the owners' meetings. Both Landon and John discuss their concerns with such a radical change. At Best Coast Boys, Tweet of the Week Here's hoping for the playmaker. Bonus. The last word 25 years ago tomorrow Jerry Jones called me and asked did I want to coach the at Dallas Cowboys. 
told him, didn't know job was open, call me when it was called next day said come to Dallas. At O underscore football, Barry Switzer, at Barry Switzer, March 28, 2019 Team Jimmy. Always.